For generations, humanity has searched the heavens, listening for the faintest whisper of another mind among the stars. We built telescopes, satellites, and arrays that scanned the sky for light patterns or radio echoes that might prove we are not alone. But the first message we ever received did not come from the distant edge of the galaxy. It came from within our own solar system, from something that was never meant to be here. An object later named 3I, Atlas. When astronomers first noticed it drifting through space, its soft emerald hue caught everyone's attention. Its brightness pulsed like a heartbeat, steady, deliberate, alive. It followed no predictable orbit, flaring and fading as though controlled by intention, not physics. For months, observatories tracked it, unsure of what they were truly watching. Then, one night, Atlas altered its course, and sent a narrow beam of energy toward Mars. At first, scientists thought it was coincidence. But then, Mars responded. Data from orbiters showed something impossible. Bursts of radiation from the planet's surface, synchronized with Atlas's pulse. At intervals of exactly 173 minutes, the same rhythmic frequency repeated, focused, compressed, mathematical. It wasn't random. It was a signal. And then, the unthinkable happened. Mars transmitted back. Orbiters detected electromagnetic waves rising from the ground, not reflections, replies. They mirrored Atlas's timing, but with subtle shifts, as if encoding new information. Some researchers thought it was imitation. Others whispered it was language. Soon after, Mars began to shake. Old seismic instruments that had been dormant for years suddenly came to life. The tremors they recorded formed perfect geometric patterns, triangles, hexagons, spirals, repeating in the same rhythm as Atlas's pulse. It was no longer a planet responding. It was an intelligent system awakening. Speculation grew fast. Was Mars resonating to a frequency that reactivated something beneath its crust? Had we unknowingly triggered an ancient mechanism buried deep below? Or had a machine been waiting there all along, listening for this exact sound? Even Mars's moons began to behave strangely. Phobos started reflecting powerful bursts of energy, timed perfectly with each Martian pulse, as if it had become a transmitter. Deimos followed, faintly glowing with a dim green light, flickering like a dying ember trying to reignite. The entire Martian system was now alive with resonance. Then Earth began to feel the echo. Telescopes detected faint harmonics crossing interplanetary space, the same pulse, the same geometry, the same tone. Auroras of soft green light shimmered above regions where auroras should never appear. Radio signals on Earth dissolved into structured noise, humming with strange musical patterns that mirrored the Martian rhythm. The pattern was spreading. And in that eerie silence between pulses, one truth became clear. Earth was now part of the exchange. If Mars had answered Atlas, Earth was next. Further data from Mars uncovered something even stranger. The seismic echoes weren't bouncing off rock, but off hollow regions deep underground, arranged with mathematical precision. They weren't natural caverns. They were engineered. Mars, it seemed, had been built to respond to this signal. Soon, Phobos's orbit began to shift, aligning itself perfectly with Atlas's rhythm. High-resolution images showed glowing lines spreading beneath its surface, like veins pulsing with energy. Whatever Atlas had awakened, it had been waiting for a very long time. On Earth, strange patterns began appearing again, in magnetic data, in atmospheric readings, in the quiet hum of the planet itself. People across deserts, oceans, and mountain ranges reported seeing green veils flicker across the night sky. Ham radio operators detected pulses of prime numbers hidden inside static. The signal was not just scientific, it was symphonic. Intentional. 
Historians began connecting the dots, their discoveries weaving a story that stretched beyond science and into the heart of myth itself. Across time and continents, civilizations separated by oceans and millennia had written of the same phenomenon, a green flame in the sky, a whisper from the red planet that set the heavens trembling. In the clay tablets of Sumer, there were passages describing the emerald serpent that spoke with the twin stars. Egyptian priests recorded nights when Mars shone brighter than any god, its light mirrored by a wandering star that glowed in rhythm. And on the other side of the world, Mayan glyphs told of two lights that sang across the darkness, awakening the stones below. For centuries these stories were dismissed as coincidence, poetic metaphors from an age that misunderstood the cosmos. But now, with Atlas's pulse echoing through space, what once sounded like myth began to feel like memory. The same geometry. The same color. The same rhythm. This had happened before. Atlas, it seemed, was not an intruder. It was a returning signal, part of an ancient sequence repeating across epics. Each time the cycle began, it carried with it change, awakening, and something humanity could never quite remember until it was too late. Scientists now suspect that Atlas is not a single body at all, but a remnant of something much older, a vessel that fractured long ago. One fragment, drawn toward the sun, still drifts within its gravitational grasp. The other found Mars, or perhaps, Mars found it. Whatever happened then, it forged a silent connection between the two worlds, a bridge made not of matter, but of resonance. When Atlas returned, that bridge came alive. Mars pulsed, Atlas replied. And faintly, just faintly, Earth began to hum in tune. At first, it was just background static in the magnetosphere. But as days passed, the signal strengthened, threading through Earth's own natural frequencies, seismic waves, auroras, even ocean currents began to show subtle alignment with the same 173-minute pulse. As if the planet itself was remembering something ancient, buried deep within its crust. Meanwhile, silence grew on the human side. NASA's live feeds went dark. Radio observatories that once shared open data suddenly went offline. Independent telescopes reported strange interference, as though every frequency used to study Atlas was being drowned out by the object's own broadcast. The official statements were brief, solar interference. Routine maintenance. Data inconclusive. But those who had seen the unfiltered data before it vanished said otherwise. The waveforms were too organized, too deliberate, to be natural. Silence, it seemed, was not ignorance. It was containment. Because silence itself can be an answer, and sometimes, it's the loudest one of all. Somewhere beyond Mars's orbit, Atlas still moves, its green light flickering like a heartbeat in the darkness. Each pulse ripples outward, touching Mars, then Earth, as if measuring our response. And Mars answers faithfully, its surface tremors and glowing moons forming a perfect counterpoint in this strange cosmic duet. The rhythm between them is accelerating. What began as hours between transmissions is now minutes. The pulses grow sharper, brighter, more focused, like a beacon tightening its aim. It's no longer just communication. It's synchronization. Across Earth, sensors register subtle but growing distortions, magnetic surges, unexplained temperature spikes, whispers of infrasound too low for the human ear. Some call it coincidence. Others believe the planet is being drawn into phase with the Martian resonance. Whatever it is, the timing cannot be ignored. And so the question has shifted. It is no longer, what is Atlas? It is why now? Why return after millennia of silence? Why speak again, when no one was ready to listen? Perhaps the answer lies not in the stars, but in us. Maybe Atlas isn't calling to a species, but to a planet. 
Maybe it's waiting for Earth to remember what Mars already has. The ancient cycle hasn't ended. It's only beginning again, as it always does, when the right frequencies align, when the pattern completes itself. First Atlas, then Mars. And soon, inevitably, Earth. Because the dialogue between worlds is growing louder. And when the next pulse reaches us, it may not just echo through the sky, it may awaken something beneath our own feet. Atlas called. Mars answered. And now, with each heartbeat of green light across the void, Earth begins to stir. The cycle continues. And the next reply may come from us.